Secret Service was super keen to talk to me because they wanted to know about hotels and lessons that I learned and things that they could use. And Have you spoke to Portis yet? Looks at me, walks over, puts his hand out, and the first thing he says to me is, thank you for saving American lives. Is that the first person that thanked you from a high-ranking government position? I had the extra <laughs> privilege to meet the President of the United States of America. You got to meet, this is after the incident? Yeah. How long after? Uh, um, uh, 10 months after. 10 months? Yeah. Why were you here? So, um, so before we go into the meeting the, the President of the United States of America, there's a reason why I said the President of the United States of America is to everyone watching this, can we just leave these, like the personal, like this was President Trump. It doesn't matter that it was President Trump. He was the President of the United States of America. I was a, a, a guy, a young bo boy who was dealt a hand in life, destined to fail, born in a council house, single parent at that time, in a poor area with no particularly good skill set. Yet, 43 years later, I'm, I'm in the White House. This is a good story. It's, it's, not, a, it's not a political message. It's, it's my life story. It's, it's a story of my life of me meeting the president. So now we're going to continue um, just, um, just for anyone who's going to get triggered. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I was going to... Um, I was in the United States to brief, to brief a military unit about what I did in Africa, in Kenya. And uh, a friend of mine, a friend of a friend was like speaking to the Secret Service. The Secret Service was super keen to talk to me because they wanted to know about hotels and lessons that I learned and things that they could use. And so they said, could you, when you're on your way to, um, to do this presentation, could you come and just give us a, some of our team leaders and some of our senior members want to talk to you and ask you some questions about the incident? And I said, yeah, abso absolutely. Uh, and then about, not long, about a week or two before I'm supposed to go there, I get, I get a phone call from the guy who's hosting me. And he said, have you ever been to the White House? I'm like, no. He goes, well, bring a suit. Because when you, once you do your, once you talk to our guys, we'd love to take you to the White House and give you a tour of the White House and show you around. I'm like, oh, it's really nice. Look forward to it. That's that. So the day comes, I'm speaking to the Secret Service and then we get changed. Meanwhile, in the White House, in the West Wing, Sheila Craighead is the director of photography, and she's got a she's she's on the she's got she's got a finger on the pulse. She's connected to everyone, and she's move, she's the mover, and she's one of the movers and shakers in the West Wing. And she knows she knows my story. I didn't know Sheila Craighead at that time, but she's been told by the Secret Service this guy's coming, and da da da. So they, she then speaks to uh, the vice presidents team and said just so it's on your radar there's this guy who can remember that guy who did this thing and they're like yeah well he's coming to the white house today just so you know and they went okay and then and she and, and she speaks to the national security advisors people as well just say just so you know and they go all oh, right that's good they then speak to their respective bosses and as we're en route into the white house the secret service get a phone call and they say oh the the vice president uh, Mike Pence wants to chat with Chris Craighead. And they're like, all right, you've got to go and see the, the vice president. So I'm like, okay. I haven't got my phone, so I can't ask for permission. Not that I would anyway. But um, So I then go and meet Mike Pence, see him, have a quick chat, and then carry on with the tour of the White House. Um, Mike Pence, I believe, men mentioned to the National Security Advisor, Ambassador Robert O'Brien, and says, hey, that guy... Chris Craighead or, um, is in, in is in the White House, and uh, the NSA is like, I I want to, I need definitely want to speak to him. So the Secret Service got a phone call again. You got to bring him back into the West Wing. Ambassador O'Brien wants to speak to him. So then they send me into Ambassador O'Brien. What a great guy. Super um, bright. But the good thing, the great thing about Ambassador Robert O'Brien is not only is he bright, but he's super pleasant as well. So he's, again, laser, I keep on saying laser focused, laser focused, knew loads, as a national security advisor should do, 
and you was talking to me about situations going on. What do you think about this? What was your what was the issue we hear there then? So I had a really good chat with him for about I think it's about forty five minutes, which is um some going for a man of who I am to speak to someone like that in the White House and the busy people. And then he's like he's talking and he's like, Have you uh, have you spoke to Portis yet? And I'm like, So that's the president of the United States. And I'm like, No, he goes, I, well I know he wants to chat to you. All right, let's go. And I'm like, it's a whirlwind. It's this is like a whirlwind. So he stands up, come on, let's go. Out through the Secret Service, like, oh Chris, this way. And he's like, no, Ambassador Brian, no, 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 we're we're, we're just going to see uh, Portis. And they're like, all right, this is this is getting big. So so then we we move through um, past the receptionist, and then they say, just wait in here. So I'm in this room, and they say, just wait here. And they go into another door. And I can hear voices inside. So inside now, the, there would be um, this. The, basically, that room is the, the president's private study, and I'm in this room just kicking my heels by myself. And as I said to you last night, I think it's I've got this the dubious honour of being the only person who's been in the Oval Office who didn't know he was in the Oval Office. So, <laughs> so I'm in the Oval Office and don't realise I'm in the Oval Office by myself. Um, he, the door opens. I hear some talking and stuff, and then. Uh, uh, and in there is, uh, and then I walk in and I'm met by President Trump. And uh, and he um, looks at me, walks over, puts his hand out. And the first thing he says to me is, thank you for saving American lives. Is that the first person that thanked you from a high ranking government position? Uh, yes. Well, n no. In person, yes. Immediately after the incident, um, there was a, a government minister from UK sent me, uh, phoned me up, and sent me a letter. That was that was it. Nobody from your own country, no, personally came people, up to people you. People from the army to people thank from, you for what you did. People from the army, people from um, like members of the military, members of um, any any of the. Diplomats in Kenya did, but no one outside that, and no one, no one ever has since either. Wow! And um, but President Trump, um, he was, thank you for saving American lives, which, if you don't, you can. We all, and we chatted about a lot of other stuff, but if you think, you know, if you just park all your opinion or whatever, think about that. I I went into that private study. There was no media there. There was the British government didn't know about it, so the, in theory, there's absolutely no gain whatsoever for the president, no gain at all. Mm -hmm. But he took time out to thank me for saving Americans. Something to think about, something to acknowledge, mm -hmm. I'd say. Um, yeah, and then and then and then we we left, and then I got shown the around the Oval Office by Ambassador um, O'Brien and things, and and then and then uh, and then that was that was that that was that. It was a like a strange, strange days. I say the um, wasn't very well received from the Brit to the British government. They found out about it. Yeah, I I I, I uh, so I give uh, President Trump a. A, a coin, a challenge coin, and I got a Trump uh, a president's coin. So I was calling the guys up, saying, "Hey, I just I bet, I can't, you can't believe this. I met the president yesterday and gave him a coin, and they're like, oh, that's awesome." And then some, some, so on, someone said, "Have you told the commanding officer?" And I went, "No." They went, "Probably should do." And then, uh, and that's what I thought. And I told them, basically, long story short, I told them, and all hell broke loose. Hey everybody, I'm Sean Ryan. Click here to subscribe to the Sean Ryan Show YouTube channel for the hottest and most compelling interviews that you will not see anywhere else. I've also made a playlist of all the previous SRS episodes so they're easy to find. You can find that right here.